welcome back to part two of this uh, narrow frame Cub Cadet pulling tractor build. Um, you can see a little bit more has been done since part one. So uh, stick with me and we'll show you how we got this far. Well, this is part two of our narrow frame Cub pulling tractor build. Um, some parts showed up today. We're still waiting on a few other parts, but big thing was this seat box right here and uh, Couldn't really find anything online about how it actually like mounted and went on the tractor and how you would mount everything to it So I figured I'd show this because this is how this is how I did it the holes I already had the holes drilled in the bottom and they fit right up with the stock holes on the tractor um, I just had to I just had to, you know, take a drill bit and just kind of waller them out just a little bit to get them to fit. And then I used fender washers. You probably didn't need to, but I had to grind the side off a couple fender washers to get it on there. And then the fenders, um, I thought some of building a spacer and spacing them out, but I would like to change the offset on the rims. I think these are, these are probably 10 inch wide rims and they're probably like uh, two by eight. Uh, offset I didn't really measure them but I would like to put 12 inch rims on and try like a six by six offset you know get the wheel in back into there and we can do that now because of the way the fenders on there but basically all I did was I just kind of held the fender up I put the footboard on which I had to redrill those holes there that I so eloquently welded shut so don't weld those holes shut but uh so I just kind of got the footboards back on and kind of got them leveled up where they needed to be and then you can see right down here, um, normally they would, you know, like they would be almost all the way out to the side, but they're not. So I may, you know, I may round this a little bit just so somebody doesn't catch a foot, you know, there, or there, just kind of give that a little bevel. But anyways, um, so I just basically mounted the fenders right to the box and then I just had to drill a hole right there and that let the, you know, the fenders on there pretty solid. I think I will drill another hole in here if I can get up on the inside which is going to be difficult but I should be able to get up on the inside you know drill another hole and put another bolt you know somewhere up in here to just give it a little more you know a little more um, mechanical uh, attraction there and then I was thinking I might build a bracket coming off the, the uh, transaxle or something you know to kind of brace this up right here um, then these these brackets here we probably won't thought that was a big chip in it, but it's not, it's a reflection of the bolt head, but um, we'll, we'll use these to make a weight bracket to hang, you know, suitcase weights underneath here, which we should have enough ground clearance to, to do so. We, we did on that tractor. I did basically do the same thing on that tractor, but um, yes, yeah, so that's, that's where we're at. Like I said, I just kind of wanted to show how that went on there because I couldn't find, I couldn't find anything on how that mounted. So maybe that'll clear something up. It's an awesome, awesome piece. It uh, it sits, you know, sits nice and low. It's a little forward, you know, um, but it, it's perfect for for pulling. I, I think, you know, and my it's my kids pulling this too. You know, when I sit on it, my knees are a little higher than probably they would be if they were, you know, if it was stock. But I mean, you're not cutting grass with it. You're you're pulling it. So, and then we got this aluminum this aluminum piece here the aluminum grill which it might seem a little counterproductive to take a 60 pound 60 pound uh grill and put like a five pound grill on there because you know trying to make you know get it as heavy as we can but um at least you know this way we'd be able to take the weight off the front put it towards the back but anyways let me pull the hood off because i haven't I, I can't do it with one hand so uh let me let me pull the hood off and we'll talk about the grill so this grill was another piece that I couldn't find any pictures or anything on on how it mounts. Well, it basically it goes, it's got a cutout here which goes around the frame and then um, you probably could mount it below, but I chose to mount it on top. There was no holes in it, so I just drilled, held it up there square and straight and uh, used fender washers on the top and just you know marked up through the stock holes that mounted the original one on there. And it's a little, it's a little floppy, but it's a lot sturdier than I thought it was going to be. 
So what we're gonna do is we're gonna run from the, the pivot for the hood, I'm gonna run a piece of, you know, 3 16 or quarter inch, you know, aluminum flat bar back, you know, to the tunnel back here somewhere, maybe come off these bolts, but I want them hidden by the hood. So I might have to come off a little bit higher, but not an issue. And then we'll just run it up on the inside and then that will still allow us to have the hood pivot, but we don't want the hood to pivot all the way over like it did on the stock one because it's just going to tear this up and it actually i had to do quite a bit of work where the hood hit the where the hood was hitting the original grill so we're just make it so the hood you know pops up about like that and then we have a hood prop kind of built into it and I, that'll just be the the best of both worlds that'll give this thing some you know some so some i can't even talk some support so it doesn't flop and Plus it'll kind of beef up where the hood pivots and everything. Cause this hood, I mean, this must be it's a bunch of body filler in there, but like you can see where they, they must've had a, an issue and they welded washers on there. I didn't, I didn't weld that. My welds look a little bit better than that, but um, they must've had an issue with it. So that's where we're at. The clutch, clutch should be here tomorrow. And I got to get the, the flywheel cover, um, get the flywheel cover cleaned up and so we can get that on there and we can get the motor mounted, get the clutch, clutch assembling everything in. Uh, this front axle, like I said, this one came from Vogel. Excellent piece, it fit extremely well. It's got nice brass bushings and everything. So I greased up the spindles, I powder coated the spindles and I powder coated the tie rod. And then, uh, you know, got that, got that in there. And then I need to get some spacers, which I ordered to keep the wheels spaced out. I didn't want to just stack a bunch of washers. So I got some actual aluminum spacers from McMaster car. They'll be here tomorrow, Monday, sometime. Um, for that, I got some new uh, lug bolts for the front cause we had one break off. Actually it stripped out and I had to drill it out. That's a whole other story. But anyways, then for the tie rod that comes off the steering column to this front axle, we'll, we'll show it a little bit better, but it basically bolts onto the bottom you can see the bolt right there it bolts onto the bottom and then it comes right back to there so you basically cut it to length and then you'll thread this rod you know cut it to length and you'll thread this rod and then that'll give you your adjustment for that so that's the the steering system and we'll actually be able to turn the freaking thing because that one there um you had a homemade front axle in it and it it worked but you couldn't you couldn't drive it so that's where we're at and then i'm going to build a i'll build a cover panel i don't have to make a material run but i'll build a cover panel for that you know nice aluminum a nice aluminum cover we'll just kind of give it a brush with a scotch bright pad it'll just cover that and then i'll probably I, I know i'll make it come you know back to the seat box we'll have to notch around where the shifter goes but i'll probably bend some pieces down on each side you know and make them you know come all the way down to kind of fill in all around that just just for aesthetics if nothing else and then we'll just wait for my steering wheel to show up i got some work to do on the steering column but uh then we'll make a nice little aluminum filler piece in there which will cover up all the holes on that and we'll do the same for right back there um nice little aluminum cover for that and uh my kid wanted to use diamond plate but diamond plate diamond plate's kind of tacky so we'll just kind of do a nice little brushed aluminum piece and then I got a hitch coming. Uh, I don't know, the post office taking their sweet time with that, but we've got an adjustable hitch coming for it. And then we'll probably, probably build a weight box. Like if you saw my other videos I built, you can see the weight box underneath the, the axle on, on that tractor. I'll probably build something similar to, you know, something similar to this one, you know, have it kind of hang down and, and go from there. And then we'll build a, we'll build an adjustable an adjustable one that'll hook to the front of the transaxle and then hook to the front of the frame. And then I got a pin thing. I'd show it to you, but I don't know what I've done with it. Oh, it's right here, a spring pin. Nice spring pin that we'll have, you know, sticking right out here that you just pull it and then slide the, you know, slide the weight out on the front. They sell them, you can buy them, but I can make it for what they want for it. And then I've got, like I said, I got a steering, a, quick disconnect steering wheel and hub coming for it too. And then the wheels, I got the wheels and tires off of that tractor. I, I really wanna buy some polished aluminum ones, but I don't think it's in the budget at this point in time. But 
I'll either use these. I think these are, a, like I said, I think these are a two by eight offset or three by seven or something like that. And, uh, but these ones over here, these yellow ones are more of a centralized offset. So whichever wheels we decide to use, um, I'll take down and I'll get them sandblasted because I'm not sandblasting them. But I'll get them sandblasted and then I'll just use that prismatic show chrome. We'll powder coat it chrome and then they'll kind of match the brushed ones on the front. You know, closer than they do now. So that's what we'll do there. And then got the MSD coil to go on there. And then we'll, you know, get a little piece of rubber for the battery box. And battery hold down, we'll probably put the fuel tank either right there or I may put the fuel tank up here. Haven't really decided yet. And I have a... I have an aluminum starter pulley and then I, you know, the starter generator and all that stuff. I want to powder coat some of the brackets on the, on the motor. And then we got to adjust the governor down in this, this 4,500 RPM governor, but we'll make it spin 4,000 because that's what the rule book says. And then I have a guard to go over the clutch as well, but we'll powder coat those footboards. I, I probably, I thought about just painting them, but they're going to take a beating, you know, so if I use some powder, um, then the powder's pretty close. I mean, you can see this is this is powder and that's paint. It's close enough to where you're not going to notice it. Um, so, yeah, anyways, that's where we're at. Here we're laying out a weight box to go underneath the back axle on this thing. It'll sit just up, on, up underneath. You can see on that one right there, that green box, the lighting kind of sucks, but you can see that green box that goes under the axle and uh you know it's sucked up to the bottom and it goes from the back of the axle to the front and you can just throw a bunch of weights like there's anything heavy i could find in that one and that one i built out of some scrap that i had this one here she's built out of a brand new piece of the sheet metals that i just bought yesterday so i just kind of got it laid out um basically i'm making a fold line right here and i'll just kind of take my my cutoff wheel and just kind of give that a little little scratch there and there and there and then I'll fold this side up and then I'm gonna measure again before I, I mean I have this side laid out but I want to measure again just measure twice and cut it it's still too short but um, basically we'll do the same thing here you know this will be a, a fold line here and then this will be the other side so this side will fold up that side will fold up and then the front up and across and down and then like here's my my fold lines and then that will fold up and then we'll have to take some measurements you know and cut a little whoop like that you know zap a couple holes that'll bolt right to the bottom of the axle and then we may have to trim a little bit off the top here you know depending on the frame and everything how it lays and then we'll build a we'll build a bar across about right where that Oh, that little triangle shaped piece there with a hole in it will build a, a weight bar to hang my suitcase weights and we'll make this tie right into the front of that. I probably should have left a little bit more material on that, but I didn't. We'll end up welding something back on there. But so that's what we're doing. Um, and this is this is kind of how I lay lay out for the, using the plasma. I got one of these wrench magnet things that we can see them on the wall up there from Harbor Freight. And I lay that down. They they actually have you know a straight edge with a magnet in it, but I I didn't buy one and I didn't build one. So this is a half inch piece of metal, and the tip on this thing it it's like a half inch standoff. It's within you know thirty second, sixteenth of an inch when it's all said and done. But I'll you know lay this on my line and then tap the magnet right over to it, and then you know take this and just draw it along and it works really well sometimes this thing sticks to the magnet but i must you know have enough wore off it or something that it don't stick to the stick to the magnet anymore because every now and then when i first started doing this it would like i'd put that over there and it was like you had to give her a hell of a yank get it to go but this is how that's how i i lay it out it seems to work pretty well this would be nicer if it was longer sometimes you know story of my life but sometimes you know it's it's too long so it just it works it works really well see and then 
Uh, this is difficult. I should have done it before I flipped it over, but I just notched that a little bit with a grinder right here at the edge. You can see where I cut with the plasma over. I left a little bit there and a little bit right there, and it makes it. I'll try to do this with one hand. It's too stupid to grab a tripod. Um, yeah, it, I can't do it with one hand, but you can see how nice of a little bend you get. And it was easier to do that one because I was pushing down instead of pulling up. But you see how easy that is to bend that. And then you just come back in with your welder and just give it a little in a few places. And good as uh, good as it would be if you, if you used a press brake, which I would love to have a press brake. But insufficient fundulation story of my life. But um, it works. It works well. And this is just, this is eighth inch, I think it's eighth inch, yeah, eighth inch sheet metal. And it works well. So now, I'll, like I say, I'll fold that up and we'll fold this front up. And with any luck, it'll fit. And there's our box. And like I say, we'll have to, to get it up there and I'll have, there'll be two holes here to mount it to the bottom two axle bolts. And I'll have to kind of cut that down like that to clear the axle tubes themselves and then zap those bolts in. I may have to trim a little bit right here. Um, I left this low in the front to clear uh, like the uh, any, you know, brake rod or anything. And, and like I said, I'm gonna run the weight bar across to hang suitcase weights on and then we can just build tabs that come down. That's what I did on that tractor. And it worked pretty, or actually worked pretty well on that tractor. That's why I decided to do this and be in that my kid's gonna pull this. We gotta get it up to 1,050 pounds and he weighs 50 pounds. And kind of like an idiot, I took a ton of weight off from it with uh, you know the different axle and whatever, but we should be able to get it up. And then I'm also fabricating a sliding, sliding weight bar underneath there. Um, I gotta get a different piece of tubing though. I bought that two and a half inch quarter wall. And I mean, it's plenty rugged, but it's just too, it's too big so I have a, a piece of two inch right there and I think a piece of inch and three quarter would go inside it but I may end up just using a piece of inch and a half which I can get a piece of inch and a half you know quarter wall tubing be plenty strong plenty rugged and obviously we'll have to cut you know cut a little bit off there but uh I made a bracket you can see it comes right off that right there and down and it goes under I made the bracket fit to two and a half inch but um you can see it's a little it's a little wide in the bottom right here but uh you know it's got to come up a, a bunch too so what i will probably do is just zap that straight section out and then fold it in till it touches that and then weld it out um and then in the back oh i got a template right here's my template actually this will hang off the front of the this will hang off the front of the transaxle and then the piece of tubing will weld right to the back of that and that'll hang right off the transaxle or either hang off the transaxle or I'll make it hang off that that other uh, weight bracket there but I kind of maybe want to hold off a little because the foot I sent the footboards out to be sandblasted so I don't have them back yet because I wanted to powder coat them, but I don't know. We'll see. But yeah, I, I got to get that. You know, next next step will be getting that that crossbar to hang the suitcase weights on, getting that on there, and then everything's pretty much going to tie into that. So your front weight, the back of your front weight bar will tie into that. Front of this box will tie into that, and it's just just a good strong way to do it. You know, your weights are hung on the tractor, and then you know we got the we got the seat, you know, seat box here. We can put some stuff in. I wish I had more lead. I don't have any lead and wheel weights aren't made out of lead anymore, but um, we made this little piece, nice little aluminum piece for under the steering wheel. And these bushings on these tractors are, these bushings are plastic. And I've had a few brand new ones over the years. And this one, there was nothing wrong with it, but I melted it out because I couldn't get it off when I was trying to cut the steering wheel off. But you can get a bearing. It's an inch and an eighth OD, three quarter ID, right at Tractor Supply for about four bucks. And put it right in there and it'll work just as good as any bushing you ever had. So, gotta get that all laid out, get the steering wheel. I got a you know QD 
steering wheel mount. So I have to get that welded on. Um, got to get the steering and everything centered up and go from there, but that's where we're at now. Oh, and this is what we're left with right here. I got a, I didn't measure the holes properly and I got to notch a little more out for the axle tube to get it to go up, but that's what we're left with right there. It'll go in those, the two bottom axle, axle tube holes. And then I have to cut a piece, you know, I, like on the other one, I, I took a bolt, I cut the head off and I just kind of welded a bolt there, there, and there. And, uh, you know, then I just cut a piece to kind of follow the contour of the rear end and made a cap for the back of it. And I, I might have a piece of diamond plate. Diamond plate looks kind of cool in an instance like that. And then the, the front, here's the front. The front will come up a little bit higher when I notch around the axle tubes, but then I will weld a bar, you know, a good piece of bar stock over, um, you know, out to about here or so, and then have it so you can set a uh, suitcase weight on, you can slide it, slide it over and it'll clear the fender and everything. And then I got to look in, I think what I can do instead of making that other fancy bracket is I can just weld a piece on the end of this piece of tubing and we can just zap a couple holes in the front of that box and make it all uh, make that bolt right to the box and then obviously the box is going to hang off of those right there i mean hell those are two grade eight or there's actually two on the other side so that's four grade eight bolts i mean hell that ought to hold you know five six hundred pounds that we're going to put on this um it'll work good that way you ever go to take you ever go take it out pull a couple two bolts there pull the two bolts out of the right here drop the front weight bar off and then you'll be you'll take two more bolts out of that that crossbar there you know the the weight bar there and then pull the bolts out of the back drop the pan out slide it out and then uh you know obviously you pull your four bolts right there and drop the the weight bracket right out so i love it when a plane comes together well this is what today's project was i've got the weight system just about finished i uh, did a bunch uh, last night and then I finished it up today. I got just a little more welding to do on, on this thing. I, I got to weld up my cut line there and then uh, there again I couldn't read the tape measure properly so I got to fill a gap down there but it'll all figure out just fine but that's the weight sliding weight box we got on the front and uh, put a wing nut or something on the back back there to be able to fits because I just had it out so be able to take that out and then you can hang your weights on either side hang your weights just like that and then put this guy back on and then put your wing nut back on and then you'll be able to reach down pull that comes out a lot farther than that somewhere along those lines it comes out too and it's pretty close to the ground but I think I can shim up that piece of square tubing right there I think the one that slides out I can weld a like a 16th or a real thin piece of like sheet metal on the bottom that'll shim it up a little bit but I mean even with that the front tires on the tractor are flat but even with that I mean I'm not going to tell you what I weigh, but I can stand on it. It doesn't touch the ground. Um, we got the weight bar across the center. You can see it all ties in. You can see the piece of tubing there for the sliding bar ties into the front of the weight box right there. And then this bar goes across. You can hang your suitcase weights there. So with the foot footboards on it, you have to set your suitcase weight on out here. Just slide them under. We got pretty good clearance there. And then you can see the weight box. Um, you can see how it all ties, how it all ties in. Um, this is three eighths, two inch by three eighths uh, flat bar. That'll be plenty strong. That's what I'm using on my other tractor. And then I got a piece of one inch by, oh, probably quarter, I'm guessing, as a strap on each side going down. Had to use a little bit of a spacer. And then come around here to the back. And this is the back of the weight box. 
and you'll be able to, you'll have three nuts on here and you could use wing nuts if you wanted to, but I found with my other tractor, you don't have to get in there too often. So we'll probably just use regular nuts. That'll go on just like that. Then you know your wheelie bars. I ordered a really cool set of wheelie bars. Should be here this week. Um, those will go on there. And then I decided to use the other, the other rims. They actually suck the tire in. You know, you've got just, just about a finger's width between there and it just, it just looks a lot better make it narrower, easier to haul, and who knows, it might even drive better. But yeah, I'm pretty, pretty happy with, with that, sliding, that sliding bar right there. And we, we probably won't have to run it out that far being that, you know, this tractor is gonna be light and my kids light, so we're gonna have to get as much weight on it as we can. So we'll probably, um, those weights are half inch thick and that's eight inches, eight and, eight and a half inches across there. So you ought to be able to fit 15, 16 of them on there. They weigh seven pounds a piece, do the math. It figures out to a lot more weight than you'd really think. But let me show you this side here. But yeah, she's coming along, coming along pretty nice. Well, obviously you have to drill some holes in the top of this so that pin will lock, but she's coming along, coming along really nice. I'm. I'm really happy with it. That, this piece here on the front, this weight box here on the front, took me just about, just about all day. But it laid out nice and it's square and straight and I'm a little disappointed. What I did was, um, you can look down at the bottom, you can see I didn't run the eighth inch plate all the way to the bar right there. I figured I'd put a little chamfere on the end of that so if it ever did hit the track, it would you know, scoot across it. Well, when I laid out this piece right here, I ran that to the bottom. So I, I in essence, I didn't leave myself enough material, but um, that, like I say, that'll lock those weights in there. I'm probably gonna drill a couple holes in that so that you can, you know, suck the weights up, throw a pin in so they won't slide forward and back. I mean, they bite in really well on there cause I, I just cut them with a plasma, but I got a buddy who has a CNC plasma cutter and, uh, he said he'd cut us some more weights, but anyways, that'll conclude part two of this. Um, <laughs> these projects always seem to take way longer than, way longer than I ever anticipate. Um, I, I figured we'd have this together and, and running by the end of the week, but uh, I mean, we lost a couple days in the painting process. And then you can also see, I'll touch on this now that I just noticed it, but I, I did get my coil mounted, but there's my clutch. It's a three puck clutch, uh, Zach Kerber engineering. And uh, like an idiot, I cut the drive shaft a little bit too short, but I can use a three inch coupler. I have one on hand, use a three inch coupler and that'll take care of that. But anyways, like I was saying, these projects seem to always take way longer than uh, I anticipate, but the end result is, is worth it, um, I think. My kid put that sticker on there. He's he's pretty proud of that. Um, oh, and also I made a plate for there and I tried to make a filler panel for there and I messed it up. So I have to make another one, but that's all just thin aluminum. And we'll debating about polishing it. You can see I made the one for up there too. I'm debating about polishing it. Um, we'll see, I, I think just a brushed finish, it's easier to maintain. But anyways, like I was saying, I won't ramble anymore because this will be a long, video of nothing but rambling, but um, I should get the parts back from the sandblaster this week so I can get the footboards blasted, get the, the other back rims, or excuse me, get the footboards powder coated, get the other back rims um, powder coated, and the other tires, their 24 12 12s are gonna run on it. And uh, worst case, we're gonna have to step up to a eight inch rim on the front instead of a six, um, you know, to get our, our spacing, but I, I think I, I, I think we should be okay. But anyways, that's enough rambling for today. We'll pick this up again when I get more work done. So as always, thanks for watching.